what if I told you that I think that atheists are, supposing there's a God, are the most respectful, or have the most respect, or show the most respect for God? Um, the only people who show more respect for atheists, for, who show more respect for God than atheist scientists would be those who have, who have met beyond any shadow of a doubt, um, God. Not, of course, your doubt, not because that is easily, uh, eliminated, but, uh, a reasonable person's doubt, or a reasonable machine's doubt. <clears throat> and I say that because I was thinking about how, I was thinking about ties and suits, and how it's absurd. And how I used to wear to school, wasn't a uniform, I was the only person doing it, and my roommate until he, he stopped. Uh, I would wear in high school uh, a suit, and a, or not a jacket, but a, a dress shirt, dress pants, dress shoes, and a tie. Often suspenders, sometimes a bow tie. Um, and, and I was thinking about how my girlfriend's family would probably love if I were still like that. And then also if I had sort of the, the vision that, that was, that was with that style, uh, which was seeing myself as being that person who's going to get up, go to work with a suit and tie and stuff, have, uh, a, an important by that definition job, but it's of course all absurd. Uh, most of the jobs that to which a person wears a suit and tie are not important. Um, and, uh, and it's just, it's an absurd thing, but you know, sometimes when I want to take Angela out, uh, I'll, 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 you know, also fait plaisir. If it's about, you know, just, you know, why not? We have this thing in us. We like dresses and suits and uh, ties and all that. It feels nice. And so we, we should be able to, you know, go for it. Um, uh, but it's just absurd that it's been institutionalized or made into this almost like religion. That the only acceptable thing to wear, you are less of a person if you don't, etc. You are more of a person if you do. Um, and I was watching this TV show and I was just thinking, wow, you know, I used to... The, the protagonist or the character that was wearing the suit and tie and was like important was often sort of this image that I had that I would aspire to. And it's absurd. Uh, and I hope that I'm doing actual work that's important now. Anyway, uh, but we, we humor ourselves. And there are other ways in which we do that. I humor myself with God. Um, there's no reason for me to subscribe to any uh, idea I've ever heard of a thing that could be called, that would be called God uh, in lieu of another name. Um, but I like to, I feel God. I feel his presence. I, I feel his guidance. I look for signs. I humor myself. I enjoy it. And so that's okay. That's in my programming, this, this idea in God. And and so, and so, so I, so it's this tool for me to reassure myself. I was supposed to have that negative experience and learn blah, blah, blah from it. It was a tool for me to, it is a tool for me to see more magic in things. Holy shit. There's this card that keeps appearing. Of course, it should appear. We play out with all the cards in the deck, but I swear to you, it appears at some very, uh, some very funny moments. Um, this, when I play cards with my girlfriend, there's a certain card that has a lot of meaning for me. I've had it because of another, it started with another girl. And then was sort of, I pointed this out with another girl and we would see coincidences. And now with her, it's crazy. It's like, it's all the time. Of course, that's how the brain is. It sees patterns where there aren't any. But we humor ourselves. We also say plaisir. We, it's, it's, it's nice to just really believe, holy shit, that means something. God is talking to us and all that. And it's fun. But I'm aware that I'm 
just humoring myself. I'm aware that I'm using this concept of God to scratch some itches as a tool, that it has utility. I know that there is no reason for my brain to accept God, but it does accept God because that's just one of my quirks. And, uh, but I'm aware of that. I have enough respect. Now let's suppose that God exists. I have enough respect for God to not have my own idea of what he is. To based on what other people have said and what has been translated, et cetera, et cetera. And all, you know, all the ways it's been distorted to say that that is the image of God. And now I know God. I will never go farther than to say I feel his presence. Uh, that I look for his possible signs. I'll never presume to know this is what he wants, this is what he is, etc. This is what I should do. I mean, for me, it's just be moral, and it has nothing to do with God. It's just more of my quirky programming. And so my moral acts... You know, my now my commitment to any place I sleep in, I clean up litter. It's not for God. It's just because that's just in my programming. So, on se fait plaisir. So, God's in my programming. Certain acts that fortunately align with morality are in my programming. Um, enjoying wearing a tie is in my programming. But you can't take it farther than 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 that and that's where that's where the respect comes in is in two ways of course in all religions they talk about have humility don't pretend to know or understand god but i see that get thrown out the window all the time when people talk about god um really any talking about god any evangelizing any apologetics any just any talking about god is going to involve this is what god is and i i have no reason to believe that god even exists i just feel this presence and i'm sure it's the same programming you have so i use your word and an atheist scientist is going to go a step farther rather than just not having not being so arrogant as to have this image uh described by other people and then you know however it fits with you right and then you salad pick what you want blah, 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 blah. so so all atheists we say oh okay i'm not gonna pretend to know about that stuff no reason i think that's real um certainly not gonna go as far as to to say oh this is what god wants this is what god is this is what god can do and an atheist scientist goes even farther an atheist scientist, any scientist, what is their objective? To look at the world and to understand it. To look at this image and to deepen our perception and understanding of it. So, of course, it's the scientist that would discover God, right? Not some fool who had some vision, blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and we would discover, she or she would discover whatever form, this thing that you want to... Of course, the thing doesn't exist, but supposing it did. Supposing it wasn't just a, a quirk of our programming, that's why we all kind of have the same basic idea of what's going on uh, up there, even though it isn't. It would be, of course, a scientist that discovers it. It's a scientist that's truly receptive to, what are you? So he's asking the world, what are you? Oh, tree. Oh, photosynthesis. Okay, stars. Oh, black holes. Okay. Oh, hey, what's that? Hey, how are you control? Are you, I, could, can I call you God? Oh, okay. Tell me what's, what's your deal? Science is about questions, finding answers. Um, which is why the scientists are the most humble of all, in general. A true scientist is always like, ah, I don't really know. But uh, I'm gonna ask the world, see what I can pull from it, and then go, hey, maybe this? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. We'll assume it's true for now, we'll see. Um, 
And God isn't a tool for a scientist. God is the sort of the objective. Scientist's goal is to understand the world or some part of it at first. And if God is omniscient, omnip well, if God is om om omnipresent and omnipotent and the creator of all things, then that would, that would probably uh, qualify as sort of one of the goal discoveries of a scientist who wants to understand the world. It's creator, it's designer, it's manipulator. So, uh, so yeah, it just kind of puts you in a weird situation. If you believe in God, and if anything that I just said was singing for you, then the only way to be respectful of God is to say, I don't know God. And I, I, like, God hasn't said anything to me. These fools keep talking to me about God, but these fools are saying other things. God, when you want to talk to me, you can. Uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make up pictures of you and or whatever until then. So, so I'll talk to you when I talk to you. Uh, and that's just because you know you haven't revealed yourself. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to disrespect you and be, blah 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 blah. So. Oh shit! And then and then you have to just be a waiting atheist, an atheist waiting, atheist waiting, a theist waiting. So you're just like, and that's what all atheists should be, really, anyway. And that's what we should all be about all truths. Oh, well, I don't really know. Got like some possibilities. Is there a dragon sitting in the driver's seat? Gosh, well, there's this wood there I can't see. Uh, I'm going to assume no. Is there an Asian man sitting there? I'm going to assume no. Is there any human sitting there? I'm going to assume no. Is there any organism sitting there? Neo's you know, over there. I'm going to go with no. Because I'm not going to, like, use some presence there as some kind of a tool. Make up pictures and stories about it, and then... And then... That brings me nothing. Um, I'm not gonna, yeah. There we go. How to be a respectful... How to be a God-respecting person? Be an atheist.